Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with G Star Power, and in particular G Star Power 3.1, uh, we're just going to look at a, a simple analysis here. Which and the question that we want to ask is, uh, I'm running a regression model. Uh, we're actually going to run two, a simple regression model. Uh, and I want to know uh, a simple regression model and then we run a hierarchical regression model. Uh, and I want to know how many participants do I need uh, in order to achieve a particular uh, level of power with respect to the experiment. Okay, uh, so and we run we run a simple model uh, where we're feeding in all of our independent variables, uh, and then we'll run a, a a a more complicated model, a little bit more complicated where it's more where it's hierarchical. Okay, so here's G power uh, G star power three point one. I've got this opened up here, and once again, there's a number of important fields that are important or drop down menus. Uh, there's the test family, okay, which gives you a number of possible families of analysis that you can undertake. In our case, the analysis that we're interested in uh, is an F-test analysis. Because uh, if you remember, any time you run a regression analysis, particularly, let's say, through SPSS, the output that you get, you always get, you, you usually get F statistics and so on with the ANOVA, uh, which is testing the overall significance of the model. So the, the regression actually is falling under, uh, uh, under, under F-test, the family of tests. Uh, the statistical, this next drop down menu here lists all the statistical tests that G power, uh, G, G star power allow you to undertake with respect to that family of tests, F tests. And what we're interested in is if we come down to the end here, you can see we have linear multiple regression and linear multiple regression. There's two linear multiple regressions here. There's one for a fixed model. So this is gets a, it's not that it's complicated, okay? But there's there's basically two types of models that we can run. We can run a fixed effects model uh, or a random effects model. For the vast majority of people, it's going to be a fixed effects a fixed effects model, unless you have some sort of prior knowledge that maybe that the the intercepts and the slopes associated with the models maybe change uh, due to let's say some sort of multi level or some sort of uh, different variable, like for example like location. Uh, that people in Dublin uh, might have different characteristics with respect to the intercept and the slope compared to, let's say, people in Cork, or people in Ireland might have different characteristics compared to when it comes to the slope and the inter and the slope and the intercept compared to people uh, in the in, in, in England, uh, as an example. But the vast majority of us are going to be just running fixed effects models. Okay, so these are the two here that we're interested in. The random effects models can be found uh, up in exact. And if I drop down here, you can see it allows us to do a random model here, but we're not interested in that at this stage. Okay, uh, so we're going back into F tests, that's the family, and the statistical test I'm going to choose at this stage is a fixed effects model with your squared deviation from zero. In other words, there's no hierarchical, uh, let's say, analysis being done here. We just want to know what the R squared, what the goodness of fit is for the overall model uh, from zero, if that makes sense. Throwing all of our, throwing all of our predictor variables into the mix. Okay, so let's just choose that. Okay, so we choose that. You can see actually everything changes. The, the next thing is the next drop down menu that's important is the type of power analysis that you might want to undertake. Uh, now, once again, there's many of them. The two interesting ones is the a priori, a priori one, which is the one that you run before you do your experiment. This really, this is really what we should be doing before we do any experience, experiments. So we choose our alpha level, we choose the power, and hopefully we have some estimate of the effect size that we're trying to observe uh, in relation to the model that we're building. And from those three things, we should be able to calculate the required sample size that will help us to achieve achieve this given alpha power and observe observe that particular effect. We can also run this analysis after we've done the regression. Okay, So this is a post hoc analysis and the question we're asking here is how much power have I achieved uh, knowing my alpha, my sample size and my effect size, if that makes sense. But in this case we're just going to go for the a priori uh, analysis uh, and it requires one, two, three, four parameters. Okay, uh, The effect size that we're interested in now the effect sizes here, uh, you can see here, zero point, uh, point zero. Oops, it pops up here. It's very small. Point zero 
who was classified as a small effect, 0.15 as a medium, and 0.35 as a large effect. So these are F-squared effects. They're not the same as cones, yeah? albeit we can actually convert these to cones. Uh, an effect size of, of 0.2 is classified as being, excuse me, as being a small in relation to cone, but in relation to these F squared statistics, uh, it's actually 0.15, okay? So, depending on the size of the effect that you're trying to observe, let's go for a large one, let's say 0.35, so let's say 0 0.35 is where where we've got this, we believe that the effect in the in the population uh, is a large effect. Uh, we set our significance level, defaulting it here at 0 0.05. We're not taking into consideration any modifications uh, because of the number of predictors or anything that we've thrown into the mix. We're just setting it at 5%. Okay? Uh, the power uh, by default here is 0 0.95. What this is saying is that if there is an actual effect in the model, if there is an effect present, well then, with with the, what we're saying here is we should be able to identify it. We should be able to reject the null, if that makes sense, 95%, 95% of the time, and do it correctly because the effect actually is there. 